So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanking clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Beatles, music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole is like a, a like dick theater. I've imagined your pants. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I do that. Uh, we're not sluts. We just love love. Hello, this is Mrs. Atom. And this is Mr. Atom. Welcome back to another episode of By the By. Hi. This is going to be <laughs> a Happy New Year episode. Yeah, Happy we're, New Year. Woo! Yay, we're just getting into January. Look, I'm becoming a woo girl. Oh, please don't do that. I'm so excited. Really? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I am excited it's a new year. Yeah, it's going to be a good year. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So did you ever hear that joke? What joke? What do you do with 365 used condoms? I don't melt them all that di- melt them all down make them into a tire call it a good year <laughs> thank you that's right that's where this oh podcast boy. is going yes I love puns and jokes and laughs and right. and the d yes so we're gonna start off with um a little bit of what have we been up to because we had something very fun on the eve of New Year's Eve New Year's Eve Eve yes December 30th. What did we do then? What did we do? What didn't we do then? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that was uh, our latest and greatest uh, sex ed with Mm -hmm. Mischief, where we did the uh, fetish fashion show, the couple of awesome demos, and then the uh, little talk on BDSM and intro to kink. Yeah, intro to bondage, BDSM, kink. It was very lightly touching the surface on all of that. uh, As Mr. Adams... There was some hard touching of the surfaces as well. Skimming the surface? I don't know. I can't say it. You're going to twist whatever I say anyway. <laughs> Most likely. Yeah. But yeah, so we just kind of had a, a, a brief overview of that and then the fetish, fetish fashion show. Easy for you to say. Ugh, just, I, I can't talk tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work to put together, mostly because of the, the fashion show part, but it was still a lot of fun. Yeah, so... Um, we got I, to show off a lot of sexy outfits. It's kind of funny because I honestly wasn't really paying attention to Miss Jiff in her first 30 minutes of talk um, because we were so kind of running around trying to get ready for the fashion show and make sure that we were all dressed up and pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, that was uh, kind of a blur. I, I picked up some of what she said, and it was kind of crazy. We had a packed house. 110% of the people that were supposed to be there were there. Yes, yes. you heard that right. 110%. <laughs> um, well, that's what happens when friends bring friends. They were... <laughs> Two extras. Yep. Yes. Um, but it was good. It was, uh, uh, I think it was a really good turnout. And then um, I know that her talk and, and opening went very well, mm-hmm. well received. And then we moved into the fashion show, which uh, we're going to talk about that a little. Yeah. I was so excited. I came, I started with, I think my favorite uh, thing that I was wearing of the night was uh, what I started in, which was I had a pair of black leather pants that we had gotten fresh from Saks. Mm-hmm. Um, and they hugged your ass very nicely. I love that. The sax, number one, leather is amazing. And Saks' yeah. stuff is sexy as hell. It's awesome. Love that place. And it um, just fit you perfectly right off the rack. Yep. I know, yeah. which is Hugged rare. every curve. But yeah, mm-hmm. and the length is right. And I'm not a tall I guy. Know. Which makes me think that if you were a taller person that you'd be kind of hosed. You'd be wearing culottes. <laughs> <laughs> leather culottes. Leather clam diggers. That would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Oh, geez. Anyway, um, and then I had a awesome uh, crushed velvet purple blazer mm-hmm. um, that uh, I had uh, gotten for my birthday. That mm-hmm. was awesome. Thank you, Tony and Maria. Um, and then... And uh, you were wearing the blazer just open yeah. with no shirt or yeah, anything shirtless. underneath. Yeah, Because it's comfortable and it's awesome. I, and, uh, I know, but that with the leather together? Yeah, it was, it was very attractive. Because the blazer as well also has leather trim on it so it's awesome uh and then i had a pair of purple ox ears yes from trinity leather um that i am going to end up buying from trinity leather because those i just loved them it just made me all happy and shit you were so excited when you put them on i really was (laughs) it's like bouncing around like a kid in a candy store i felt i sort of felt like tigger (laughs) you know like ttfn boingy 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 yeah i was bouncing everywhere (laughs) hmm but yeah, that was awesome. Um, and then you started out 
I gotta um, be honest, I didn't. I was too I'm busy looking at myself. Trying to think of what I did. Oh, I started out in the the long jacket. Oh thing. yeah, the. I don't it, know how to describe it. Even it looks like something from Underworld. It looks like if you've seen the movie Underworld with Kate Kate Beckinsale, it sort of looks like something she would be wearing in that. It's a sort of a post apocalyptic lace up PVC one sleeve one sleeveless kind of with a hood. Yeah. I mean, it's badass. Um, it's yeah. lace up the front and lace up the mm-hmm. back. Yeah. I, it's short in the front, long yeah. in the back. Yeah. It was awesome. It's like a jacket with tails. Yeah. A hooded jacket with tails made of PVC, lots of lace, <laughs> and one sleeve and one sleeveless. Thank you, AliExpress. <laughs> the things you can find and, online. And if our listeners can actually picture that the way it is in reality, I sort of want to see people you. drawing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what I imagined it. Draw a picture from this description. <laughs> so, um... I hope some of our listeners are please sketch artists. Um, <laughs> so that was awesome. And then so we were going through changing and how many changes? There was four of us there dressing. There were four of us that were that were modeling. Yep. And we got through, I think it was 15 outfits in the 30 minutes. Because yeah. we, you and I were changing. And then there was another model. And then Miss Jiff showed off a couple of outfits as well. And so there was a couple of minutes talk about each one as we were coming in and out. Yep. Um. Yeah, and I think my favorite one, just because it's so much fun, was the really thin uh, black dress from Gallery Serpentine that had the red zippers uh, in front of each breast, in front yeah. of the vagina, and then in the, the back by the derriere. The derriere? Yes. <laughs> but it's Not fun. The dairy. It's fun because you can... Well, where are you going Sorry. with this? I was just thinking the derriere. That's the breasts, but the derriere <laughs> is the derriere area. And talk about your derriola. <laughs> God, I need to either drink a lot more or a lot less. Okay, please continue. Talk about your zippers. But it was, yeah, I love that dress because it is so much fun with the zippers in front of the breasts and you could just kind of, you know, either slowly unzip them or just whip it out. I really wish people could see you. I'm just fondling myself at the moment. Yes, mock unzipping yourself. (laughs) And, yeah, I love to feel myself. And you're just wearing a tank top. so There's no zippers on you. They're just invisible zippers. Um, And then you had those awesome little things on the areola. Yeah, so... I don't, um, what do you call those? So they're not pasties because your nipples were showing. Well, they're basically pasties that go around because they, they went directly around the nipples, but yeah. then they were almost snowflakes kind of coming yeah, out. like red starbursts. Yeah, so they were red snowflake type design pasties, basically. So whenever I unzipped dress, that's what yeah, you What really see. sucks is I missed all that because I was changing. And what I really wanted was to get pictures of it. And oh. I wish I had given my camera to somebody in the crowd so they could have <laughs> taken pictures of all of us. Because we had so many great costumes that mm-hmm. night, and there's zero pictures. And it was it was nice because we had a, a variety of fabrics. So we had the leather, you had the crushed velvet, we had the PVC, I had an outfit from Honey Burdett. Yep. We had latex. You and I both had latex yep. outfits. Um, and then we had, as well, a couple of very light cosplay outfits. Yep. So it really kind of ran the spectrum of all different fabrics, all different styles of outfits that you can have. You had a harness on at one point. A oh, badass harness made by Trinity Leather again. Yeah. Love yeah, that girl. That was, yeah, it was beautiful. Um, but so it really just kind of showed the variety of things that you can wear depending on you know, what the environment is, what you're looking for, what you feel like. How much money you want to spend. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I mean, we really did. We had things like the Trinity, or I'm sorry, the um, the AliExpress, the mm-hmm. first thing that you wore, that post-apocalyptic yeah. kind of thing. I think that cost us 22 bucks, if free that, shipping, yeah. uh, from AliExpress. And then you've got like the latex number, which is in the upwards of hundreds, multi-hundreds uh, of dollars. Right. Um, you know, and it is, that is one of those things that's kind of awesome about that is you, we could show off the the really high end mm-hmm. shit that we have. And then the, the stuff that is a lot more accessible. Yeah. And um, it doesn't have to cost a lot to no. be fun or to look good. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I did, which I was one of, uh, kind of proud of, we was, we were trying to show off that kink is a mental thing and it's, you know, being sexy and fe- is about feeling sexy. So one of the things I had was a pair of my black jeans, um, and my black mesh pillow shirt. And then I mooned everybody uh, and I had on a <laughs> pair of your pink underwear. Oh, yes. You know, and that's just, again, it's one of those things that just shows that, you know, sexy is as sexy does. Mom always said, sex is <laughs> like a box of chocolates. <laughs> I don't want to know where that's going. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants the nougat. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's one of those things, like you said, if you are wearing 
underwear or clothing of the opposite sex, especially if it is underwear, you don't have to show people. No. They, if you want to, that's awesome. That's great. But at the same time, if it makes you feel sexy, that's all that matters. Do it. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. We it was it's kind of funny. I had never done a fashion show or anything even close to a fashion show um, in my life. And there was a couple of those moments where you're like, OK, you have two minutes and 14 seconds to change. And so <laughs> we would run back to the little um, anybody who's been to OSS. We our changing area was the BDSM room. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'd the run Voyeur's back there room. the voyeur room and, you know, you instantly disrobe. <laughs> I remember. So we had a, a friend helping us do the, the clothing quick changes and a friend from the States. And she had flown in the morning of the day before. So within less than 36 hours, uh, I told her, I was like, you know, look, it's been 36 hours and you're now seeing me naked again. And she looked at me and goes, I'm surprised it took that long, <laughs> <laughs> which was great and, and oh, pretty accurate. So true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, <laughs> what do you learn from this? Uh, if you want to see us naked, all you have to be is a friend um, or all of our friends have seen us naked. Yeah. I don't know. Either way. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun. She, she helped out a lot. There was again another. There's thing. no way we could have done it no, without help. Yeah. You know, my latex outfit is the latex trunks with the zippers, and then the latex top mm-hmm. the tank top with the zippers. Um, and she and I were both having difficulty getting the last zipper done, and I was always like, "Fuck it, we just won't zip." And then she's like, "No, give it here." And, then, <laughs> and I was zipped up. It was awesome. As long as you don't catch any skin in there. I know, right? You know? That's what I was afraid <laughs> <Yeah>. of. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose another appendix. Um, okay. I don't know. You have more than one? Really? I don't know. I've never looked in there. <laughs> absence of proof is not proof of absence. Um, yeah, so that was uh, good times to be had by most. And then yes. we ended up after, after that. So Miss um, Jeff talked for 30 minutes. Yep. And then we had the 30-minute fashion show. Yep. And then we went, this was a bit longer of a sex ed session. Normally they're an hour, but this one went for an hour and a half. Because we had big plans. Right. So in the last 30 minutes, we basically split the group into two, and we had uh, di- two different demos. So everybody, basically group one went to demo one, and group two went to demo two, and then they swapped halfway yeah. through. And we so. redid those 15-minute demos yes. twice. Um, and then, f- so Miss Jiff was in charge of the law, mm-hmm. um, and then another friend of ours, uh, so he was uh, demonstrating impact play. So a flogger, a paddle, and a riding crop. Um, and our friend was on the St. Andrew's cross. So that was exciting. I wish I could have seen some of that. I couldn't because I was blindfolded during most of my demos. Um, (laughs) (laughs) From what I heard, those went really well though. Yes. I could at least hear. Yes. But the door was closed. So I couldn't hear. Um, yeah, but we heard that it went very well. We got really good feedback from that. And apparently the law had fun with it and friend had fun with it and. So, uh, yeah. but our demo, you want to mm-hmm. talk about our demo since you did all the talking during our demos? Well, we started the demo. So what we wanted to show was, um, we wanted to show a little bit of how to tie up your partner in different ways and a little bit of di- play with different things like temperature play. So we had, we didn't do any ice or cold things because Mr. Adam doesn't really like that. Um, but we did do some, a little bit of candle wax and things, but I started off with, first of all, I tied your hands and so you bound your wrists. Oh, and we should make the point too, that I was, I was, uh, actually I was wearing a jock strap when it all started each yes. time and that's it. Just a jock strap standing right. in front of, you know, uh, a, a small 10, 12 people, group of people, mm-hmm. which, um. That's, Did that make you nervous? Are you getting used to it? I'm starting to get used to it, but it's still, you know, the whole body image issue still always pops up because you're like, well, here I am naked in front of 10, 12 people. And and how is that different than a Saturday night? It's different because I'm not actively pursuing them. I'm standing there. I am an object. You're on I display. will say one of the things that, as a side note, that I think might be fun to do is the um, CF... NM. I don't know if you've heard of that. That's a new genre of porn. Mm-mm. A new. It's a genre of porn. Uh, clothed female, naked male. So much of it is just women just sitting around talking and having drinks while the men serve them naked. Oh, okay. Um, I think I've heard of that. And it's just, it's, yeah. I sort of, after seeing, after doing this, I sort of think that actually might be fun. Um, I'm, I'm game with this. But, you know, it's just kind of. Although it would be hard to be clothed while everybody, you guys are naked. Yeah, see, all the men yeah. would be naked and then the women mm. are clothed. 
and it's it's not sexual really it's just a sort of a that's how it is right you know so um anyway so uh, I'm being naked in front of everybody, and I, I'm sort of getting used to it, but I don't think I'll ever be 100% used. Yeah. I don't think you ever really get used to it. I don't think. Maybe you do. Yeah. We well. need to talk to some porn star friends and see if they ever get used to having sex on camera with everybody naked, or uh, everybody clothed, filming them. I imagine. Like anything. I don't know. We need to get somebody on. We can yeah. interview them. That'd be That'd badass. Be, yeah. Okay. We'll work on that. Project for the future. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> That's yes. a, that's so, a tomorrow problem. So for our demo, I started off, like I was saying, yes. with binding your wrist. Yes. And I just did a, a basic a basic rope tie. I used, I was trying to use items that you had around the house. And just to show people that because this is an intro class, you know, this isn't in an advanced class at this point. And so we wanted to show that you don't necessarily have to go out and buy special things. If you have rope at home to use, then Perfect. great. It does you know, look very nice. It looks very pretty. But you don't have to go out and buy special things. And it also, the other thing is if you're on a date and you have someone, you know, back to your place or you know, go to a hotel or whatnot, it can be kind of sexy to, you know, roll your... Yeah. Your pantyhose yeah, totally. off and use your stockings to tie them up with, and you can make that very seductive. Yeah. So it's it's also part of that whole mental play. So I I bound your wrists with I did use hose. I used yep. some stockings that I had. I just tied there with thigh highs, so I tied them together and used that in a, a very simple tie. So again, something easy to show people and hopefully easy for them to remember. I think we had a handout as well, um, and then. After that, I blindfolded you, and yeah. I used, at that point, I used a women's a sash from a women's dress. Mm -hmm. You can also use a men's necktie, you know, anything like that. And, of course, you know, blindfolds, you can come across those all different places. You can get soft ones, you can get satin ones, leather ones, depends on what texture you want. Sandpaper. Some Somebody's, people like that. I somebody might be into yes, it. Yes, I don't think you would like that very I don't much, think though. I would. I don't like no. sandpaper on my eye. No. And then the fun <laughs> part was tying up your cock and balls. Yes. So I, I did Some a, basic shibari work. Yes, just a, a basic cock and ball tie and you, you know, using it a bit like a cock ring, basically. And it's one of those things that we talked about. You know, if you don't do it super tight, tight enough, but not super tight, then you can wear it like that for a long time. You can have an extended play. You can go for an hour, two hours, and just really be able to enjoy it. Well, I can really enjoy it on your behalf if you don't. But <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying it. Don't oh, get yes, wrong. I know. It was fun. Uh, so, yeah, that's and I used a shoelace for that. So, again, yeah. you don't have to have any fancy rope if you don't need to. It was just a basic, you know, tennis shoe shoelace. I will say a soft shoelace works better than like those dress shoelaces, yes. the little cordy ones. Yeah. Um, and we also had a hike. We'd also tried it with a hiking shoe shoelace, mm -hmm. which, again, is a little stiffer and rougher. Yeah. The one that we ended up using was from. Like a Converse. Yeah. Really soft cotton shoelace. That was much better. And it was also, I think, easier for me to, to tie and to, yeah, to work with as well. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was fun. I like I like doing that. Uh, and then after, so I, once you were all bound up and blindfolded, I then, we talked about nipple clamps. And, of course, we have nipple clamps. So of I course had, we have nipple well, clamps. Of course. I shouldn't say it like that, sorry. <laughs> but we have nipple clamps, and I had those there for people to see. But again, I was trying to use with everyday items that you might have around your house. And so one thing that we had tried here at home and I had with me were clothespins, some plastic clothespins. Some are better than others, so be sure they're not the like, super tight, pinchy kind, or you need to loosen the spring, one or the other. For reals. Uh, but I, <laughs> for the course, I had two hairpins, and I just pulled those out and used them. And so we talked about putting on the, the nipple clamps and taking them off as well at the end because for a lot of people, it's wearing them feels really good, but also it's more the taking them off and that rush of blood going to the nipples afterwards that is just really intense. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So we talked about that a bit, and then we had the candle, one of the soy candles, so I could pour that on your back and massage it in. And so we talked a little bit about that. But I think that's going to, Candles is probably going to be a much more in-depth class at some point because there's so much that can go into that. It was awesome. Yeah, I think was, a lot of this will be broken down into more segmented classes later. Yeah, I can to see To go us, into depth more on. I can see us doing a full yeah. afternoon master class on basically just what you did and variations on what you did, mm -hmm. um, which sounds like an awesome time for me to be a uh, volunteer. <laughs> Yeah, so it was just, it was a quick 15 minute, you know, just, some, just show some basic ties and some simple things you can do at home with your partner. 
and kind of an introduction to some of that that type of play and depending on what what you're into what your partner's into and of course always have a safe word or pineapple a, a, Yes, ours is pineapple. But always have a safe word. If they're wearing a ball gag, have some kind of a touch, a tap, some kind of mm-hmm. some kind of nonverbal cue as well. Um, we've got that. Uh, yeah, we have a, a. We do the double tap. So for do. us, um, if one of us at any point in life, whether we're on a date mm-hmm. or in some sort of sexual play, if you uh, get a quick double tap like that. Um, and you don't respond with the exact same thing, that means there's a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that, that works. That tends to work for us. It's yeah. an ask, it's an, it's a question and an answer. Right. Um, yeah. So, but before you start anything like this, talk to your partner, work out how to communicate in various scenarios, whether things are okay or not. And of course, if they're not, get them out immediately. Yeah. So. GTFO. Exactly. So yeah, that was that. And like I said, we did that twice. Yeah. And afterwards, we... And you did all the talking on that. And I just got to give you massive credit. You did very well. You were clear, concise. Um, it, it's funny because I, I often don't see you as the performer of this relationship. I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm the mouth. Everybody knows I'm the mouth. Uh, I'm the comedian. But you, and, and you had many compliments of people saying, wow, you did really good. Um, I know the other partner, you know, the, you and I and then Miss Jiff and then the uh, Miss Jiff's partner, uh, he had said, had complimented your style and how you differed from hers. Mm-hmm. How she is this like dominatrix, I'm going to hurt you, like rah, kind of. Um, she's very she's, high energy. She's very high energy, highly excitable. Um, but then you, he was like, like she's she's one of those people that. It's really seductive, but you know she's going to hurt you, and she's going to enjoy it. (laughs) Wow. And it's totally true, because you have this, when you were in front of everybody, you have this really calm, cool control, and it's clear that you are going to cause somebody massive amounts of pain, and they're going to love every moment of it. Oh, yes, they are. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I was really impressed, because going into it, I was thinking to myself, is she, I I guess I'd never seen you speak public speak really um you know and so to see you public speaking like that and how comfortable and calm and collected you were it was kind of a turn on let's we'll go do, try it again let's go do some uh oration <laughs> i am good with my mouth <laughs> yeah. yeah usually it's things going into it though not coming out of it that's very true <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, it was a good night, and then after... It was a lot of fun, yeah, it was a good class. We had a lot of good responses. I think we talked to more people um, mm-hmm. during after this one than we had in any of the others. Um, and quite a few people ended up staying at the club that night, yeah. so we did talk to a lot of people. I know there were a few people that we wanted to talk to and didn't quite get around to. Yeah, it's really a bummer. It was, yeah, because there were people kind of back and forth and everywhere. But it was a really good night, I feel like, at the club. Yeah. And, and for the eve of New Year's Eve, we're just getting that long weekend kicked off, right? It was badass. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it's funny, too, because I think we didn't leave until 1.30, yeah. pushing 2 a.m., and we never actually went up and played because we were talking to people from the end from the end of the of the class through to when we left. And when we finally left, we were like, all right, that's it. We can't take anymore. Yeah. we got to get out of here. We're yeah. exhausted. Yeah, part um, of me wanted to play, but at that yeah. point I was so tired, like, and shit. I knew that New Year's Eve was going to be a big night. Yeah. so I was trying, like, okay, we at least should leave by two, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it was a, it was a, a whale of a time. It was. I went all Kentucky on. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. All right. All right. So what do we? That was uh, wow. That was we went. That, we rambled on and on and on. Yeah. Well, it was it was a it was awesome big big night. If you're in Sydney yeah. and one of the sex ed classes is coming up, dude. Just come out and check it out. Give it a go. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So what I would like to go to next okay. is I'm gonna say a bit of 2016 year in review. The year in review. But there's a we did so much this past year. We're just gonna narrow it down to our top three favorites. Okay. What were your top three favorite experiences from 2016? Are we gonna go from three to one? Do you want me to go one to three? Or they all get like equal? They're all the same. I I would, <laughs> I don't know. Mine are all probably fairly similar. Yeah, mine are probably all equal. Yeah. Um, just just start naming them. Okay. So the the first one that I'm thinking of uh, is the 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 big party that I went to with Jack. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I spent the night with him. And Your first big overnight? My first big with overnight him. with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and we went to this big underground gay party that was all... Oomch, 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 and it was... I, we podcasted. Really, now that I think about it, we've podcasted about all three of my top mm-hmm. three. Um, but that one was awesome. It was so cool to be in a in a location where there were so many people just being comfortable and happy with who they were and it was this there was this great freedom and everybody was smiling. You don't see you know, many clubs you even even in, in you know, where everybody's drinking and happy, you always have those that those people that there's all these aggressive people that are starting fights or that are getting a little rowdy and this rowdy was a safe, happy, friendly rowdy. It wasn't ever a aggressive rowdy. Um, that was a lot of fun. It was a positive experience. It was a very positive experience. Yeah. It was my first underground gay party. Um, it was not what I expected at all, but still a whole lot of fun. Um, Something yeah. you'll do again? I hope so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, and it's, uh, it's one of those things that, not to be stereotypical, but one thing that still sticks out in my mind is this giant, like, big, burly guy. I mean, he was, you know, three or twice my width in shoulders and grr, big muscles and full beard and a, wearing a leather harness and a little leather biker hat. And he walks up to the bar and he goes, hey, mate, can I have three Chardonnays? <laughs> <laughs> Just like, that's awesome. Like, that's this big guy carrying Chardonnays back to his friends. And it was just awesome to, yeah. to see that. That was a lot of fun. All that's right. that's the first one that pops into my head. All right. Are we going to go back and forth, or you want me no. to do all three of mine? What's all your right. number two? Um, number two is probably the... If, uh, so, again, we've probably talked about this recently. Um, it was at Our Secret Spot, up in the big room, the big playroom with the mm-hmm. two, two mattresses put together. Um, there were 19 people in that room in, in, a, in a single instant. We were, you know, we were playing with another couple of friends of ours. Um, two other couples. There were six of us. Yeah, I guess there was two other couples. Yeah, so there was six of us, and we were all kind of playing with them. Um, and I took this moment to kind of look up and, and look around. And I think, realistically, um, I'll credit the Joneses because they say they take a snapshot. And I thought, oh, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to take a step back and take sort of a snapshot of this room. And I'm so glad I did because I, I did this quick count. Um, and yes. Mid-stroke, I'm counting the number of people around me. It's a, it's a good way to prolong yourself, gentlemen, you know. <laughs> Give yourself a little more time. Um, multitask. Lo- multitasking, that's right. If you can count the number of people in the room while having sex, then you're doing, then you might be a swinger. Uh, <laughs> I can see a whole comedy routine now. You might be a swinger. Um, so, I, you know, I look around and there's um, um, 14 people on the bed, in the, in the tub, and on the floor having some sort of sex. Um, there's two people that have just finished getting naked and kind of looking for a place to dive in. And I do mean dive in because it was sort of like this big, massive limbs, you know, where there's a random leg sticking up and there's random arms kind of a writhing everywhere. massive bodies. Yeah, writhing <laughs> massive bodies. Um, and then there's two people that are fully closed in the doorway along with one of the, um, fellas that works at OSS taking them on a tour. So they were newbies, first timers. So this is their first sort of, it was late, so, but this is their first look into the swinger world or into our secret spots, the swinger world. Um, and then later we caught up with him and he was like, oh yeah, because they were new and I was taking them on a tour. And I told him, huh, this is the big playroom. Sometimes this happens. <laughs> I just love that. Uh, how nonchalant he was about yeah. it. So that was, um, that's one of my other ones. That was such an Kind of a surreal moment to see mm-hmm. that many people having that much fun in that location. Yeah. Yeah. I think if that club had been on a teeter-totter, we would have flipped over. <laughs> um, and then the last one, the last big one that sticks out for me for this year mm-hmm. uh, was the first um, female, male, female with you and me and then uh, Sandy. Um, poor Danny. They had spent the night and Danny had to go to work. No. Yeah, wah, wah. Love you, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> his loss was my gain. Um, and so they, uh, he had gone to work and we came out and started talking with her. And the next thing you know, you had, this... well, you had made orange rolls. For oh yeah, breakfast. that's right. I had made. And so while you were going into the kitchen and taking care of that, I made homemade orange rolls people. This is how we take, we take our swinger guests very seriously. <laughs> I will feed you. I will so feed you. Ooh, I should do recipes. Anyway, <laughs> 
<laughs> recipes to get you laid. Yes. <laughs> That's my new cookbook. Well, there you go. Find it on Amazon.com. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, so yeah, I've she and I started playing out Kind of playing around, yeah. yeah. And then when I came out asking if anybody needed coffee, you had gone to the bedroom to get the strapless strap on. Mm-hmm. Strapless strap on, which apparently is a much better coffee than coffee. Go figure. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And then uh, next thing you know, I, it culminated uh, in a cowgirl and then face hitting situation with the two of you kissing. And right there, I sat to myself and said, talked to my 15 year old self and said, do you see this? Told you this shit really happens. (laughs) Then we finished and had an orange roll. (laughs) Maybe a mimosa. Yeah, probably. (laughs) That seems likely. But yeah, that was, uh, that actually, when I look back on it, that, that might be my moment of the year. Yeah. Because, you know, from, a, from being a young 15-year-old boy to now, you know, that, there's always, even being a young bisexual boy, mm-hmm. you know, that still, the goal has always been that male, female, female threesome. Mm-hmm. And I finally knocked that off the list. Excellent. Finally. And hopefully you'll have many more. I've had two this year. Well, there you go. <laughs> so uh, 2016 was a good year for me. Uh, mm-hmm. 2017 is going to be amazeballs. Yeah. I agree. How about you? All right. So for me, I would say my first one, and this goes way back into early last year. Oh, we're going on the way back machine. Yes, we are. So we go back. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) We go back to early last year. Uh, Mr. Adam and I went on a trip with the lady in the ginger tramp. Many of you. Oh, yes. Many of you will remember the. Drunken podcast that we did in the castle. The Drunken Jealousy podcast that we did in the castle. <laughs> That's my favorite podcast. I mean, it's not that great, but it was awesome, and it was in a fucking castle. Yes, and it was fun to record. So, yeah, we were we went on this trip with the lady and the ginger tramp, and he and I ended up spending a lot of time together on that trip, and there was a lot of sexual tension between us. And there were many times that I was so close to inviting him back up to the room with me, but we hadn't quite worked out, the four of us, the relationship between us yet. Yeah, we were still just really, really good friends. Right. We were just very good friends. And so we had we still are very, very good friends. Of course. Yeah. But we hadn't worked out how the relationship was going to go, what's okay, what's not okay. And, And so I was trying to be a good girl and not overstep any boundaries at that point. Who are you? I, I was trying. I don't even know who you are now. <laughs> <laughs> but there there was that sexual tension on the entire trip. And, of course, all year after that, there was always sexual tension. And, <laughs> and that's funny because we did have a lot of situations where we saw them in social in social mm-hmm. gatherings. Yeah. And, you know, sure, I knew there was se- sexual tension. But I don't guess I ever really realized how much I there was. To jump his bones. Yeah, clearly. Know? Yeah. But then it... I mean, who does it? The guy's adorable. I know. Fucking hating. That's why we call him Ginger Tramp. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because he earns his name. Yes. And so we... Late last year, we ended up at OSS with Tony and Maria and the lady and the Ginger Tramp. That was at the glow party, wasn't it? I think it was the glow party. Oh, my God, that was so much fun. And so we ended up there for the glow party with them. And later in the evening... The six of us ended up in that big room with the two king size beds. Ah, uh, that room. Actually, no, it started out before that because we went up to the massage tables. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I was skipping past that point. Yep. But we went up to the massage tables and Tony started massaging me. And then Ginger Tramp came in and was massaging me. And the lady was a little bit as well. And there were just kind of hands everywhere. You were off on the other table with Maria yeah. in your own little world. Yeah. <laughs> and so. Yeah, so there were hands everywhere, and, and yeah, so Ginger Tramp was massaging me then. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm thinking hands, touching oh. hands, <laughs> reaching out, touching me, touching you. <laughs> that works on so many levels, doesn't it? I know, it? it's a new swingers theme. <laughs> yeah. Okay, please continue. Uh, so we moved then from the massage tables to the big playroom so that we could all play and have plenty of space and whatnot. And as we got up to the big room, I very quickly claimed Ginger Tramp Oh, I claimed, to play with. I claimed Maria instantly because <laughs> we hadn't really had nearly enough time to play. Right. So you claimed her and I claimed yeah. Ginger Tramp. So then Lady and... Um, uh, Tony. I don't Tony think that they were complaining together. about oh, being... <laughs> no. I mean, it all worked out. I think out. it was paired off yeah, very nicely. Yeah, I, I mean, think everyone enjoyed Nobody was themselves. complaining. No, not at all. 
And so, yeah, that was when I finally was able to play with Ginger Tramp. And it was it was so much fun because it was like, finally, I get to do this. And, <laughs> Come yeah. here, big boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, that was tons of fun. It was yeah. a great, great evening. And, you know, looking forward to 2017. One of my resolutions is to have a little more playtime. <laughs> it's to, it's to and, pounce Ginger Tramp. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I love it. I know he doesn't listen, so it's going to be a surprise. <laughs> it's more exciting for him. Yeah, but the lady does. Hello, Ooh. lady. Hello, lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that was one for me. Okay. Was finally... Re- resolving yeah. that sexual tension. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that was one. Uh, okay. The second one is actually a couple of events that I'm going to lump together. Swingcations. Swingcations. Oh, we, we had, had some great swingcations. Two swingcations this past year. We had a long weekend and then a week long trip as well. We with... had multiple swingcations. We had wine trip. Oh, that's true. There was a wine country. We had so... New Zealand. Yep, so... We had Kangaroo Island. Yeah. We had Canberra. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Swingcations. Lots of swingcations. <laughs> Every cation that we had <laughs> this year was a swingcation. And it's just so much fun because you go somewhere that's an interesting place and you do fun things. You do it with fun and interesting people who you're very comfortable with and you can, you can be serious with them. You can have serious conversations. You can be flirty and have play conversations. You can play with them and have a lot of fun and there's no pressure. There's no no pressure. There's, you don't have to filter what you say. You don't have to watch what you do. If you want to reach out and touch somebody or give them a hug or hold their hand, it's okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and just, yeah, swingcations are the best kind of vacations. They're to the have. best kind of cations. Yes. Um, even better than syndication, which is when you have a swingcation and yes. you see it later on in slideshows. Okay. Um, so, what was the swingcation of the year? Oh, gosh, I don't know. That's a tough one. Um,. Because I know mine. I, I don't know that I can pick one. So I think my favorite was, was Kangaroo Island yeah. with uh, C&D from Swinging Down Under. Only because there was a couple of, because of the nature. Because at one point we saw That's an echidna true. in the middle of the road. Yeah. And I watched Dee try to persuade a, a <laughs> echidna to walk across the road. And he's not kicking it. But, you know, he's trying to scare it to get it to walk. And it's just sitting there looking at him. So and it wouldn't you, get hit. And if you don't know what an echidna is, it's an Australian... Um, it's an Australian, Australian porcupine, basically. Yeah. Um, and he's trying to get it off the road, and he's tapping it with, its sh- with his shoe, and finally it just sort of turns and looks at him and waddles off the road. <laughs> like, fuck you, <laughs> which was great. And then that and the sitting on the side of the rocks on the ocean waiting for the penguins to come in, because all C wanted was to mm-hmm. see a penguin. She was so excited to see a penguin. And then we leave, and she and I were the only ones that really saw the penguin. It was just for a second we saw the penguins. And it was because they had snuck up around yeah. us and were in a rock, literally right behind us. Literally sitting right (laughs) behind us. And her expression after seeing those penguins, her big eyes and their big, she had the blow up doll face. Big (laughs) eyes, mouth in a circle, like (gasps) kind of thing. It was so funny. And she was adorable when she did that. She was so happy to see those penguins. That was a good weekend. I think that was, that was probably my favorite, uh, you know, just Mm because of a couple of moments. They were super easy to travel with as well, which is always good. Lots of fun. Yeah. Good fun people. And then the surfing down the, uh, the sand dunes. That was great as well. Yeah, it, yeah, we almost died, but it was still fun. Yeah. We've got GoPro <laughs> video of us almost dying. Um, yeah, so that was great. Yeah. All right. All right, one. so number three for me was, and I think it was in the September-October time frame. I can't remember, but there was basically a four- to five-week period where we went to our secret spot every weekend. Yeah. Because there was, I think, the glow party one weekend. Yeah. There was a meet and mingle one weekend. Yeah. We had a sex ed class. We just went with some friends one weekend. Yeah. And, but just all the different events and meeting all these different people at every one and, you know, having some play time with new couples, with old friends and, you know, just. It was awesome. Yeah. I it remember was that. It was five weeks month. in a row. Yeah. And I think it was October. Yeah, it was uh, right around there. Into September, early October, I think. But we ended up going a lot. And it was just it's just so much fun because it's it's a nice, comfortable place. You meet different people every weekend that you go. And that was perfect proof of that because, you know, we went yeah, every weekend yeah. and met all these different people. And it was just, yeah, a lot you know, of fun. And, and the Law and Baby Doll who run the place, they are fantastic, easy yeah. to talk to. Um, it's so, yeah, it's... Yeah, you can tell they want you to have fun, a good time. It's like cheers if... Everybody was cheer naked if Norm was naked. It's cheers if Norm was naked. 
<laughs> they, that should be their, their tagline. Yeah. Our secret spot. Like cheers if Norm was naked. <laughs> <laughs> I need to tell the law that. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. All right. So let's look to 2017. 2017. What are you excited about for this year? Um, swingations. <laughs> uh, we're going, uh, we've booked already Passion in Paradise mm-hmm. the first week of October. Um, if you're interested in doing that, go to www.passionsinparadise.com.au, I think. It might not be .au, but search passion in paradise um follow them on twitter uh at pash p-a-s-h-i-n paradise um which i still love i think that's so it's a great name it's a great yeah. name it's so clever double entendre um i'm so excited for that that's the first week of or, or the the first week is when we're doing it the 19th through the 23rd yeah. of october yeah they're doing two weeks this year this is their 10th anniversary i think so. and our first trip there yeah um, we're excited to see i think Allie and l from uh the aussie, aussie swingers. swingers are going to be there that's kind of Ellie and Al. I said Allie and L. Ah, Ellie and Al. Anyway. You've been listening to D too long. I have. God, I love that He's, boy. Doesn't he always get a mess up like that? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so really excited for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm excited for all the sex ed classes that are coming up that yes. we're going to get to be a part of. That's exciting. Yep. Um, and I'm excited for continuing working with uh, Black Label, mm-hmm. doing uh, writing for that for the magazine. The writing for that is for fun. Penthouse. That's yeah. so much fun. Um, yeah. This. And also, I know that our listeners are probably tired of hearing about it by now, but don't worry, it'll be over in a few weeks, a month. <laughs> but the the Pendulum Party in February. And what I'm excited about more than anything for that is of course, you know, having a a big party and whatnot at at OSS and getting people in, but being able to meet a lot more bisexual people and, or bi curious and, you know, anybody who's interested in that type of thing. Um, but being able to have a, a time and a place where the boys can play and openly play together because I love to watch two guys together. There is nothing that turns me on more than that. And I'm really looking forward to that. And if it goes well, hopefully we'll be able to do it again at some other point in the year. Yeah, I'm all excited. Um, yeah, if you want to buy tickets for that, look for us on Twitter uh, mm-hmm. or on the website. You can get a, a pretty awesome discount. Um, yep. But yeah, that's uh, I'm so excited. Yeah, that's we have a lot fun. going on this year. Yeah, it's, especially um, early this year. February, so we're yeah. yeah. February is going to be another five weeks in a row at uh, at OSS because we've got. Mm-hmm. to sex ed classes. And another thing to look forward to this wow, year. You, wow, you just about exploded in your seat. Well, because I was thinking about it, but it just reminded me that when we have a trip to the U.S. coming up in oh, a yeah. couple of days. That's right. We're leaving on Saturday. <laughs> yes, we're leaving in a couple of days. <laughs> so you're listening to this on a Wednesday. <laughs> we're leaving on Saturday. Yes. We're going to the U.S., bitches. Woo! And we're going to be in New York for not very long. Five days. Four, four nights. Four or five days. And in that time, we're going to hit up three different swingers clubs is the current plan. Yep. So we'll see how that goes. I'm sure you'll hear about it on a podcast in the future, but I'm really excited and looking forward to that. It's going to be a whole five days full of Broadway musicals, sex museum, or the Museum of Sex, uh-huh. um, uh, latex Shopping. purchasing, <laughs> lots, of, <laughs> lots of cosplay and latex uh, purchasing, and swingers clubs. Yeah. Stoked it's about be awesome. that. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I forgot about that, too. Yeah, I do look forward to I that. I forgot that. That's, that's Saturday. I know. I need to pack. Yeah. Holy yeah, shit. At some balls. point. Um, as a side <laughs> note, my favorite uh, quote from the missus here is um, when asked if she's taking any of her sex toys to the U.S., she's like, no, if I want new ones, I'll just buy them there because they are cheaper. But yeah. I just like that. <laughs> no, I'll just buy them there. It, it's a good time to build the collection. That's you know? right. Uh, so we're going to have a whole suitcase full of sex toys coming back and, and latex and no. leather. and Yeah, probably. <sighs> anyway. <clears throat> yeah. So <laughs> badass. Mm hmm. All right, so moving on yeah. to the, yeah. the meat and taters of the... 2017 is going to be awesome. It is. Meat and taters. We're already 43 minutes into the podcast. Ooh, well, we we're should just get now getting this, to the meat then. and taters. All right. All right, what are we talking about? Uh, so the topic I actually want to talk about was because it's a New Year's type episode. Yeah. Is sexy swinger resolutions. Ooh. So... I didn't make any resolutions this year. Well, no. Just have a good time. Enjoy. Yeah. It's, it's the like, usual. Don't be a cunt <laughs> and yeah. have a good time. Yeah, that's exactly. My, that's my resolution. <laughs> But we have some sexy swinger re- resolutions, and they they go across a scale of whether you are just curious about, you know, swinging and same-sex relationships, anything like that. If you're just curious as to how it works, or if you're just dabbling into the world of, of swinging or bisexuality, if you've already 
been in it for a while. So there's a whole range of different kinds of resolutions that we came up with to give you an idea as to where you can go with things this year and to push your boundaries and, and do something different. Awesome. And have a lot of fun with it. That sounds good. Yes. What's up first up on the list? All right. So first up is to break down the barriers and do something outside of your comfort zone. Ah, ha, ha. And it can be as simple or as drastic as you want. It can be wearing lingerie, period, if you don't at all. Different types of lingerie. Go for cosplay. Go for leather if you normally go for lace. Uh, try some dirty talk. Go to a different venue than what you normally do. If you are already going to, to swingers clubs or you know meeting up with people, if you always meet at the same place or if you always do the same types of things with couples, mix it up and do something different. And talk to different people. Talk to new people. If you kind of, you know, sometimes you get stuck in a rut where you're always, okay, we're going to go out with these people, these people, da, da, yeah, da. Yeah. Open it up and, and try to invite new people in and see who you meet. So I'm reminded of um, a picture that a colleague of mine in the States gave me, which is a circle. You've got written the words, your comfort zone, and it's circled. And then there's a little circle outside of that big circle that uh, is where the magic happens. And yeah. the point is you got to get out of your comfort zone to find where the magic happens. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would highly encourage, I think it's a great, yeah. I think it's a great resolution for everybody. And I think even we Absolutely. should, we should listen to that and, yeah. and try to do that because you know, the magic happens outside your comfort zone. Exactly. Do something that push yourself, push yourself. Yeah. Done. All right. And then the second one that I have is to try a same sex experience. If you haven't already, Ooh. And you can start small and simple. You can start with, you know, some light touching, making out, kissing. You don't have to go all the way at first. I mean, that's a lot of fun, but you don't have to. But it can be as as drastic as you want it to be. But just, you know, find someone if everybody's different. Some people want to do this with someone that they know very well. And some people want a complete stranger. So wherever you are on the spectrum... If you haven't done it before, try a same-sex experience. Yeah, and I think this falls back into that sort of push your boundaries yeah. thing. You know, yeah. we all assume that we either like or don't like something without even trying mm-hmm. it. You know, give it a go. You can't mm-hmm. you can't definitively say you don't like something unless you... And if you try it and it's not your thing, then yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But yeah, push your boundaries. Be a trisexual. That's right. <laughs> Love that word. Yep. Um, and just really, you know, you don't have to, for, for the men out there, you don't have to go out and find another guy. Oh, no. You know, your wife could wear a strap on and she mm-hmm. can make you go down on her doing that. Or, you know, just again, it's, it, you can still be within your safety of your own home. And be creative. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So number three is to explore a new online dating site. Because, again, it's easy to get comfortable with, you know, we always go to Red Hot Pie, we yep. always go to Tender, but some of our best friends came off of OkCupid in just different places. So try a different dating site than what you normally do. You know, Adult Matchmaker, uh, is it Fuck Buddy, is that Fuck Buddy, one? I think, is one, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Adult Matchmaker. Um, you know, the, the long and short of it of that is you're going to catch different fish if you mm-hmm. try a different pond. Yep. Look at me. I'm making, <laughs> I'm making references. Uh, yeah, I mean, but if you keep going to the same place, you're going to see the same people. But if yeah. you do something a little differently, and another, I, I can give you advice that worked for us recently, which is just update your profile. Add a couple of new pics, change a few mm-hmm. things, and a lot of the search engines on those will pop you back up to the top of the list when people search because you're active and new. Um, Freshen it up a bit. Yeah, yeah. We, I changed three of our pictures, and the, pic, the way our pictures are stru- structured um, and then suddenly we were getting e- you know, messages like two or three a day. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it remind me, I need to show you some of the new pictures, <laughs> new pictures, the, the new people. Excellent. That sounds like a fun thing for the evening. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So then number four is to go to a swingers club or meetup. Yes. And depending on where you live, it might be, you know, easier for some than others, but they're... There are some around. It may you may have to travel a little bit. You may have to search a bit for them. Yeah. But most areas will have a swingers club or a meetup of some sort. So if you haven't been before, try it out. And you know we've we've had some recent emails back and forth with some of uh, of our listeners. You know, just because you go to a swingers club does not mean you have to have sex with other people. It doesn't mean that you have to have sex with your partner. Mm-mm. You know, for us, there's. I would guess that as many times as we've been to OSS, 
we've had sex with our between the two of us or other people almost an equal number of times as we haven't. And we've just gone there to be social. We go and we talk to new people. We feel comfortable there. You know, it's just sort of a, it's like a bar experience. You go yeah. and you feel safe and you're, that's just it. Um, it's not necessarily for everybody. There's a lot of people out there who go just to have sex, but you don't, right. there's no pressure to do anything. You don't anything. have to, yeah. Um, it's okay if you want to just go and chat people up and then ultimately, like you and I, you know, I'll give you a massage and we'll end up having sex on the massage tables mm-hmm. and that's it. And, yeah. and we're putting on a show for people, not necessarily... You know, yeah, and if you and if it's you know, if you don't want to play even with each other in front of other people, you can still use it as foreplay and then go back absolutely. home or go to a hotel and have some really awesome sex with your partner. Yeah, absolutely, it's yeah. a great foreplay. Yeah, um, but I would highly, I think it's a great idea. And the meet the meetups, there's yes. plenty of meet and mingles. Um, there's uh, you know, if you're going to a kink event, usually before a kink event, there's a munch, mm-hmm. um, which all that is is a meet and mingle. Um, you know, so just go and, and find like-minded people. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you go to one of the meet and mingles or a munch, there's no obligation to go to whatever the after party is. You go and you make friends. Yeah. 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 All right. So number five is another go-to. Do you know where we're going this time? I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so lost. (laughs) We're we're going to a clothing optional or nude beach. Oh, badass. Yes. Uh, We'll, we'll be there. Yes. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that, you know. and It's so much fun, and it's great to be outside in nature, feel the sun and the breeze on you, and just be comfortable with yourself. And this is a lot more difficult, I think, for some people, because I yes. know in the States, uh, <laughs> nude beaches are non-existent. Um, they exist in Europe. They exist in Australia. I'm assuming they exist in Asia. I don't know. Um, but even if you live in an area like some of the interior states, if there's a lake or something around yeah. that's a little more secluded, or there's an area where there's not, you know, people around, not houses and things, yeah, you know, just get down to your skivvy. Be naked outside, yeah. you know, skinny dip. Everybody yeah. should skinny dip once in their life. Um, and it's it's great. It's freeing. It's, it's freeing. fun. It's, so great. it's you know, it's uh, you know, and I understand. You know, I you know I have body image issues. There's you may not like yourself when you're naked, but one of the great things because you know one of the beaches that we go to regularly is cobblers. Mm-hmm. And you see all different types of people there, mm-hmm. and it's not a sexual experience. You go down, there's often naturists and children there, so it's not like people are just having sex on the beach. It's just it's a beach where everybody's naked. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what you look like. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Um, if you think people are looking at you, they're not. <laughs> you know, and that's that took me a bit to kind of get get over. Yeah. It's because I assumed in the beginning that, you know, you go down and, oh, everybody's looking at me. Everybody's staring at me. Nobody cares. You know, the when everybody's naked, nobody's special. And that it only matters if everybody else is clothed and you're naked. Right. Then you're special. Then people streaking, people are staring. Um, but this kind of thing, no. And the other thing is, you know, the you don't have to be naked at the nude beach. No. If there's times where we'll still see people in their swimsuits, or maybe for women, they might just have their bottoms on, you know, and have their top off. So it, it just depends. You don't necessarily have to be naked at the nude beach. Yeah. I recommend it because it's so much more fun and it feels awesome. Just think of but... all the vitamin D you're getting. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and if it's something that you can't do this at home, let's, let's imagine our listeners in Alaska. You don't want to go outside. Take a vacation somewhere. (laughs) But, you know, even in your house, you can make it, you know, nude Saturday or nude Sunday. Send the kids off to somebody's, you know, to your parents or friends or whatever house. And Saturday is nude day and you don't, you just decide not to put clothes on that day. Yeah. Um, And you and your partner can wander around and do things naked. Don't fry bacon naked. Wear an apron. Um, (laughs) That sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, I can tell you from personal experience, those scars... Take a long time to heal, both physical and mental. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's something that you can do. It doesn't matter. Just the I think the point of of going to a nude beach really is sort of getting comfortable in your own skin. Yeah, absolutely, learning to accept yourself. Yeah, and so you can do that at home. Yes. Most of us are just naked coming out of the shower into the bedroom, but are, extend that time, make yeah, it longer. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So number six is to buy a piece of sex furniture. <laughs> yeah. And. It can be, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a St. Andrew's cross or a cage for your partner. Wait, did you say we could go out and buy a St. Andrew's cross? <laughs> I, hang on, I'm going to get online real quick. All right, all right. 
and, and, and while he's gone. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't have to be anything big like that. You know, Liberator makes, uh, it's called the S, but it's basically a sex chase. And it's a great piece of furniture. We have one. It's, it's great. It's multi-purpose, so you can have your partner tied down to it, which is tons of fun. We like to do that. But you can also use it in a lot of different positions in different ways because of how it's made. Uh, but that's good. They also, Liberator also has, and I know there's other sex furniture companies out there as well, um, but they also have small things like the wedges and some different types of, of pieces that will prop you up and put you at a different angle and, and make it just a different experience and a little easier sometimes to, to get to certain parts, depending on how you're positioned. Yeah, it's definitely, it's just something, oh, by the way, I'm back, and uh, the St. Andrew's Cross will be delivered on Friday. Excellent. <laughs> um, so... You know, it's just one of those things. Just in time for our house sitter to use it while we're gone. (laughs) Lucky, lucky gal. Um, (laughs) uh, Next step, fat life. Um, You know, it's it's just one of those things that it it changes things up a bit. It's it's a different position. Mm -hmm. It's a different angle. Uh, it's a great experience. And again, like she said, you don't have to go all out and get something gigantic. You can get something small. A a small um, cube. The cubes are great. A cube is great, and you can use it as an ottoman in the living room. Mm -hmm. Or as a step st- or a stool or something in the bedroom. I was going to say, also that, a great, can, that can be great to kneel on to yeah. bend you over just the right position yeah. over the bed. It's, yeah. uh, it's amazing. So highly recommended to do something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get something a bit different. Yeah. yeah. All right. And the last one that I have on the list is to host a swingers party. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a play party. Just a, a party, a get together with either swinger friends, friends who are in open relationships, like minded people. So, again, it's getting people together who are have that same mentality as you. You don't have to censor yourself. If people are interested in playing and it happens, then awesome. That's yeah. great. But at the same time, they know that they can come and just have fun and relax. And, you know, there can be some, some touching and some flirting and it's okay. Yeah. Nobody's judging you. And I agree with that. I look back at our most recent big party, which was our uh, Thanksgiving yeah. party. We had 23 people here. Everybody was either in an open relationship, a swinger or bisexual. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody fell into that category. Uh, and that was a, it was a great experience. There was no sex, nothing. No. Um, but it was a lot of wonderful conversation and, You know, everybody felt comfortable in their own skin. Mm -hmm. Um, And the great thing about having a party like that is that because everybody knows our friends, we don't hide who we are from anybody. So it allows them to be really open and and accepting and freeing of each other as well. So it's a very safe environment. Mm -hmm. It was great. I was very pleased with the way the party went. Yeah, for sure. And if you do go down the route of having a... A party, a play party, where where you have maybe even just a few couples over. It doesn't have to be huge, but if you have some some swinger friends over and you know that there's going to be play, you can really set the ambiance and and decorate and you know kind of set the mood ahead of time before people get there. And it can be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. We should do that. I know. That that can be on the list for 2017. That's on the list for 2017. Right. We'll host a host a swingers party with no less than 50 candles. Okay, that sounds like <laughs> a fire hazard. That's my girl. <laughs> safety third. Remember, as D always says, safety third. Yes. Um, we have more shout outs to Swinging Down Under this, this uh, podcast. It's awesome. Mm. Um, yeah. So I think that's a great, I think it's a mm-hmm. great plan. I would highly recommend that as well. And again, it doesn't have to be a play party. It can be yeah. a, just a social gathering. Right. So that's all I have for a sexy swinger resolution. I think that's a pretty good list of sexy swinger resolutions. Yeah. And that's great from both the, uh, kind of entry-level mundane up to the kind of crazy holy shitballs. Um, but yeah, I think that's good. Do we have uh, a question of Das Week? We do have a question of the week, and it is something that literally just came in. Ooh. So, Should I entertain myself while no, you No, no, I've oh, got, got it up it. here. Wow, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So we're going okay. to, this came in from one of our listeners in Germany. So, Ooh, shout out to guten, all the Europeans. Guten Tag. Yeah. Um, mein Deutsch ist nicht Non-ex- gut. Non-existent? You can't speak? Uh, sprechen Sie Deutsch? No. I can say that. <laughs> Isn't that awesome that my best German phrase is, can you speak German? <laughs> because if you ask me, I go, nein. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, ich 
be uh, I'm Berliner. Uh, damn, I, I should just stick with English. Yeah, you're 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 better My at German that. Is... I'm not gonna say you're good at English, but you're better at it. <laughs> oh, that hurts. <laughs> Fine, ask your question. Hello, Germany. All right. So the question that we were asked is about face slapping. <laughs> Do either of us actively or passively have an interest in face slapping as part of BDSM? Oh, what a question. Number one, thank you for the question. I love the question. Reminds me of a story. <laughs> um, I was with a play partner, and we were on my couch, and I may have been straddling his lap. We were making out really heavy, and he was getting, like, really serious. And he kind of pushes me back from the chest and then falls off and smacks the shit out of me. You almost spit. You almost spit bourbon and coke on your microphone. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm just picturing this. Yeah, it was, I mean, he's like he just smacked the because you know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, he smacks the big guy. Grr, uh, smacks the shit out of me, and my first reaction was to smack him back. <laughs> I didn't because my second reaction was, "Wow, I kind of liked that." I will say, I don't like that. <laughs> Even though I just said I kind of like that. Um, it's not something that I'd look for. Uh, it's, it was, that moment was great. Um, so it, if it happens, is it a turnoff? Or it's not it, a turnoff. Okay. No, it's not a turnoff, but it's not something I actively seek right. out either. Uh, and I'm not a hitter. I, I barely spank. I can do spanking, and I like using a flogger. I'm, I feel like I'm good at that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still not something. When I do it, I'm, I have to put my mindset in that I'm a different person. I don't think that different person could ever smack somebody in the face. I have wanted to smack you before, mm-hmm. but it's usually because you're pissing me off. <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> Stop being like that. Anyway. Um, but no, it's just not my nature to hit. Um, so, but yeah, I don't, I would never actively ask somebody to smack me. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they did smack me. In the heat of the moment. In the heat play. of the moment, it would be okay. I'd be all right with that. Um, I might then mentally put myself in a position where they couldn't smack me. So I'd either be really close and be kissing on them. Okay. And then, you know, it's hard to smack somebody who's kissing on you or who's nuzzling your neck, whatever. Mm -hmm. I might do that, but I don't want to be just, don't just smack me. Don't tie me up and smack me. That that was a very loud pterodactyl out there. (laughs) In Australia, the birds are pterodactyls. Yeah. Yeah. So how about you? Uh, Can I smack you next time we're fooling around? Well, you can try. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Fair enough. So I don't generally like to be on the receiving end as much. And so I would generally say that, no, it's not something that I look for as far as being slapped. Okay. Um, Why? Uh, and this is going to sound weird to you and to everybody, even to myself. It's too personal. <laughs> And I know that sounds odd, and I don't know how to explain it so that people understand. But being slapped in the face is one of those things that you, to me, I feel like you do it in the heat of the moment, and it's when you're angry. And I can only think of two times that I have been slapped in the face, you know, on purpose, and it was strong anger each time. Did you deserve it? No, I never deserve it. Are you kidding? The lady doth protest too much, (laughs) methinks. Um, yeah, I probably did. Yeah, there but... you go. <laughs> the first step is accepting yeah. it. But it's just, I don't know, it's just one of those things. Maybe it's because of how I was raised and that you you never hit someone right. like that, <clears throat> you know, in the face especially. Because the face, if you're if you're using a whip, if you're using a riding crop, if you happen to leave bruises or marks or whatever, anywhere else you can cover it up. The face, you cannot. I'm now curious about how you were raised. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't raised like that. I know, I'm just kidding. But it's just... You just don't hit people. In, right, right. A, you don't hit people, and B, you don't hit them in the face, right. especially. And I don't know. That's a hard mental thing for me to get over. It's just it is such a personal thing to to mar someone's face because that's something the entire world sees. Right. Yeah. And to make a mark on that, even if it's a temporary, it just yeah. No, I can't do it. No, I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. I would never hit you. I mean, well, I would hit you, but not in the face. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, face slapping is not. I don't think I could bring myself to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Now I do yeah. like like when somebody puts their middle finger on one side of my cheek and my thumb on the other side of the cheek and directs my face. Mm-hmm. You can be very forceful with that. Right. You can actually be hard enough that I feel like you might leave bruises. I like that. Right. Um. But that 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 quick pop the no. Yeah. 
I just smacked myself. That kind of hurt. <laughs> It'd probably be a little harder. and yeah. Lord, I hope not. But um, Yeah, I just, I don't think I can do it. And it's not something that I would enjoy myself, no. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I, I don't know. We have to try it in the heat of the moment. But since I don't like to be hit as much, I don't think I would it's like it. It's just funny because I can even imagine me in the heat of the moment. I'd be like, pop. Did you like that? Honestly, my guess is that my gut reaction would be to hit you back. Because one of the times that I was hit... So face slapped. I uh, my gut react. I just hold off and slap the person back because it, was it wasn't just, sexual. No, it was just natural reaction. Was you know you slap me, I slap you. Did back. you slap your mom? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take a note, moms. <laughs> Don't and smack we, your daughters. And we just kind of stood there and stared at each other for a few seconds, like holy shit, well, this did that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> this is awkward. Uh, I guess one of us is going to have to take her top off. <laughs> hey, ma, show me your goods. <laughs> But yeah, I just, I don't think I could do it. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. You're, uh, okay. Yeah. I think yeah. if I ever smacked my mom, well, I wouldn't be here on this podcast I, today. I thought I was going to die, but yeah. I, I would yeah. be dead. <laughs> my body would be somewhere in the East River. <laughs> I'd be sleeping with the fishes. Yeah. 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 All right, cool. That, that's all we've got on great that question. One. <laughs> keep keep them coming. That question was fantastic. It <laughs> is. Yeah. No, it's a great question because we've seen it um, at, at like some of the BDSM parties. Yeah, we've seen it done. And admittedly, when when the two partners are in the moment, and when it's right for them, it it's like it's mesmerizing, and it, it's but it's still it's shocking. It's it, shocking, but it's not. It doesn't make me giggle there. No, because you're no. like. <gasps> You know, you're just kind of pulled into that tension between the two. Yeah. And and so it is, there is something very mesmerizing about it, but it's not something I can do. No. <laughs> I have a desire to smack you now. I don't know why. It's going to be a funny thing, isn't it? But we have like, so, you know, face smacking. Yeah, I think that's completely different. But like we've done the, you know, um, breast spanking or smacking, whatever yeah. you want to do. That's cool. Yeah. And, and other hitting is fine. Um, but yeah. I Again, think, it's that, that chin up. It just, that's yeah. hard for me. Yeah, no. Can't that's so it. funny. I love that it's too personal. <laughs> it's too personal. Just stick your fingers in me and a couple in my mouth. <laughs> stick fingers in my mouth. Yeah, no. Now hold me like a bowling ball. <laughs> Two fingers there, a thumb there. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'd rather have that. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Hey, show me your seven ten split. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get this out of the gutter ball. Oh. I know, right? Oh, it just keeps getting better. I know, I know. I'll spare you the rest of the jokes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. These jokes are right up my alley. <laughs> okay. Oh. It really doesn't tend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, what's great is these people can just turn off the podcast and, uh-huh. and, and this is going to wrap up here soon and they don't have to deal with it. You're still going to bed with me. I, I am. And I'm, you're probably still going to be coming up with stuff all night long. <laughs> yep. I sure will. <laughs> um, oh, so this is only going to get worse as well because uh, I'm taking an improv class. Uh, that's something else that I'm excited about. Just oh, as a yeah. side note, yeah. So, uh, so the jokes are only going to get worse and worse on the podcast, folks. So, uh, taking improv, going to do eight weeks of improv, and uh, we'll see if I improve on my improv. Apologies, I'm not sure how I let that one slip through the cracks. <laughs> Should never have allowed you to sign up for that. <laughs> uh, that's right. <laughs> what? This isn't cooking. <laughs> this is an <laughs> intro to cooking. All right, uh, let's wrap this mother up. All right. Um, so. If you want to find us, uh, we're, you know, by the Bob podcast. You can find us wherever podcasts are sold. We are now again on ASN radio network. Um, once again, if you are interested in the by the Bob, uh, pendulum party at, uh, our secret spot, uh, follow us on Twitter. Um, we've got discounted tickets for that. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at by the Bob podcast. Um, it, the link will be, it's not yet, but it will be on the website, www.com. Um, by the by dot com dot au. Forgot what our website was because I never go there. Um, <clears throat> and if you can't get to the Twitter feed and you can't get to the website, feel free to email us. We'll we can send you a link. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you can reach us at the atoms of love at gmail dot com. Ah, that's uh, 
Oh, and we're also on Facebook. Yes. And there should be a link on Facebook here. There is a link on Facebook. Already currently. there. So if you search for By the By Podcast, all one word. All one word, I uh, you'll you find, find us it. there. Uh, yeah. So, um, and uh, please, again, go find us on iTunes and uh, give us a review. We'd really, really, really appreciate it. Yes, definitely. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks.